It had been a wild morning. Katie discovered that when you have four friends over for a visit, it's hard to make yourself heard. <laughs> Orby found out that sometimes not everybody wants to play the same game. And they both learned that getting along with everybody at the same time required some thinking. Right before lunch, Andy was running around in circles, shouting and making funny faces. Orby was using Katie's bread spread to make waves on the floor. Bryn and Phoebe were pretending to be turtles. Belkis was playing a kangaroo. Katie was helping Orby by making waves on the other side. Katie pulled and Orby pulled and... And by chance, their friends all landed on the bedspread at the same time. There was a terrible rip sound and everybody stopped moving. They looked down and there in the middle of the bedspread was a huge rip that zigzagged across it. Everybody stood still for a moment and they tiptoed off it and... Katie called Mom. When Mom opened the door, she found Katie and Orby still holding the bedspread and feeling very bad. It was almost split in two. Mom looked at the bedspread and then bundled it up on her arm. She told them that there was no use in fixing it. It was damaged beyond repair. The room was full of sad little faces as everybody apologized. Mom smiled and told them that these things happen sometimes. And then she added that it certainly wasn't the end of the world. And everybody felt a bit better. That night when Katie and Orby went to bed, Mom looked at the blanket and told Katie they would have to do something about replacing the bedspread. Katie said that everybody was sorry. No one wanted her to be angry with them. Mom kissed Katie goodnight. He told her that when she was a little girl, she made mistakes too. It was important not to think of it as anything more than that. No one intended to rip the bedspread. The next morning, it was a bright, sunny day. Mom was in the kitchen making a big breakfast for Dad, who had been working really hard on a project. And they were talking about the bedspread as Katie and Orby walked into the room. Mom turned to Katie and told her that she had an excellent idea. She told them that after lunch, they were to invite their friends back over to help make a new bedspread. Katie and Orby looked at each other. They didn't know how to sew. Mom told them they wouldn't need needles, but it was important to wear old clothes because she had an idea that could be very messy. <laughs> that afternoon, Mom snuck off shopping, and Dad spent some time in the basement. They were cooking up a surprise, and now that the friends were all here, it was time to start. Everyone was in the backyard waiting. It seemed like an odd place to make a bedspread. Mom came out with a brand new white sheet and two pillowcases. Dad came out with ice cream containers full of colorful paint. It was paint they had used to paint Katie's room and other parts of the house, too. Mom draped the big sheet over the hedge so it hung down. She put the pillowcases on the grass. Dad asked everybody to choose a color. There were lots to choose from. When each friend had a container, he told them that they were going to paint the bedspread. Bryn wondered where the brushes were. Mom, who was the designer, said they were going to throw paint on the bedspread. Katie was getting the idea and liking it. She was to go first because, after all, it was her bedspread. Katie had yellow. She thought for a moment. Her friends watched her. They'd never thrown paint at something, and I have to say that everybody was eager to try. Katie lifted up her paint. Mom called out to stand back. Everybody moved out of the way. Katie looked at the middle of the bedspread. She wanted the middle to be bright yellow. She held tight to the container and threw the paint. And she moved it in a sort of circle as the paint shot out. Yellow splatters spiraled into the middle of the sheet, and everybody oohed and ahhed, and it started to drip down the sheet. Then Dad supervised the painting of the pillowcases. Katie dribbled leftover yellow spirals on the pillowcases, too. And when she was finished, Mom called Orby next. Orby had chosen 
a kind of pink. That didn't surprise anybody. He held his bucket up, getting ready to throw. He threw his paint in small, short throws. Pink splatters appeared everywhere, little ones, big ones. And when he was finished, everyone told Orby what a good job he had done, and he was delighted. Each friend took a turn, and they had a ball. Mom and Dad did what they called the final touches. That meant that they put color in places that they thought needed it. When everyone had used up all their paint, Dad put the containers away. Then after he'd washed up, he started the barbecue, and he made big, fat hamburgers for all the artists. They sat around the bedspread thinking how splendiferous it was. It dried very quickly in the sun, and soon Mom came out with an indelible marker. Indelible meant it wouldn't wash off. At the bottom of the bedspread, she asked each artist to sign. They took turns putting their names on the bedspread that used to be a plain, ordinary sheet. Katie wanted to put the bedspread on her bed that very night, but Mom told her she was going to wash it a few times first. That kind of paint had fumes, and she needed to make sure that they were gone before the sheet could go on Katie's bed. Everyone was anxious to see how it looked. A few days later, when it was ready, she invited all the artists over to see it. Everybody, Andy, Bryn, Phoebe, Belkis, and Katie and Orby, held their breath as Mom puffed the pillows into the case and then laid the bedspread across the bed. I have to tell you that the friends hugged each other. They were so thrilled. It looked fabulous. Bad came in and piled all the artists on the bed and took a picture, which Katie still has to this day. They had fun turning one thing into something else. They all felt bad about ruining the first bedspread, but delighted to have been part of making the new one. And I hope if you do something you feel bad about, you'll enjoy making it all better, too. Just like Katie and Orby and their friends. <laughs>